So when we are ready to attach this as a call to action, we, this would be one of your videos here. We'd go to call to action, create new. We would name it um, booking or schedule, whatever you need to, because they're not actually going to see this. The name is for your own organization. Then you would select calendar, and then you're just going to paste your Calendly URL. So what Calendly gives you is a little copy option, and it's going to give you, it says calendly.com slash mark dot Mormon, uh, most likely, or was it two M's or, uh, so it would, this is what it would be. So when you copy it, it's going to try to include this calendly.com twice. So you would just delete that everything. And then this is exactly what it would look like. Then for the button text, you can say, you know, make boy book at a time with Mark, make an appointment, make an appointment with Mark or something custom. And you, you can say, you know, schedule with, uh, Mark, if whatever, whatever variation of that you want. Then I would also click this default option. So what that's going to do is every time you hit record, it's going to automatically attach that call to action to your video without you having to go back and, and manually do this. Um, so the idea is to set up a nice template so that you don't have to do worry about anything else except for the content of the video itself. So one call to action would be for booking. Now let me ask you this, um, what are we primarily looking to do? Is this for prospecting? Is this for follow-up or the combination of, of multiple things? Okay. So then I would say um, we might want to set up, what, what do you think it's mostly going to be used for? Uh, or what do you think the most common application? Okay, great, great. So then in that case, what I would do is let's set up your template for prospecting. And then that way, if you have videos um, that are outside of that, then we can go and remove the, the call to action one at a time, uh, if need be. So let me ask you this, um, or let me discuss this a little bit with you. What are some other call to actions you might want to incorporate? Um, our best practices, what we've you know, gone through our learnings and through some of the case studies we've developed is for, for colder prospecting, um, there's a series of call to actions that tends to work well. That booking one is obviously the first one because that's the ultimate goal is to set appointments. So um, the second one is uh, for a social proof asset. So do you guys have something like case studies, testimonials, some asset like that that you can, you can leverage? Do you currently have? Okay. Do you know the uh, pertinent that asset is to the, the prospects? Like say if you're prospecting a certain type of vertical and then the, the case study or the testimonial or the social proof that you have is specific to that vertical, ideally you'd want to have that asset be available. Um, because you know, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to have so many different buttons. Um, but like if, if they're, One's a case study or one's testimonial or something like that. That's definitely fine. But I wouldn't say to have, you know, three or four buttons with different social proofs. Um, you want to keep it somewhat simple. So you have a booking button and then you have a social proof button, um, which may lead to a different reason because it sounds like you got several resources. So maybe you even have up to two buttons, which is the different types of, of social proof that you have. Um, for the URL, it does need to be the entire URL. So the HTTPS, all that needs to be there. Um, so just make sure that you put the entire URL. Um, also, we recommend new tabs so that way it doesn't close the video out, opens a new tab with that. And then for button text, uh, exactly. I do, we do recommend some custom text for the, the type of asset. So if it's a case study or if it's a testimonial or if it's, you know, if it's something really pertinent or specific to that vertical you're approaching, then you would say, you know, case study on company name or case study on vertical or whatever that might be. That way the button is even more interesting and attractive to the, the prospect you're reaching out to. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend custom text for that, that asset. Um, all right. So that's the social proof. The next one is, um, possibly like a visit a website button or, um, any other, like if so obviously, yeah. yeah. So, so visit a website because in this day and age, especially in cold prospecting, what people do is if they're at all interested in what you're offering or what your video says or what messaging you've got across to them, they're typically not everybody, but a lot of people will do their diligence and they'll research you. You know, they'll try to see what they can find on you, whether that's through Google or, you know, LinkedIn, they're going to try to hunt down some information to see if their own. And what your job is um, for a prospector is to kind of create a sense of transparency with your outreach. So that social proof button, the visit a website button, any questions you might think of. So I'd say the, the obviously the best way is to have learning. So if you've spent a lot of time, you know, kind of in the trenches, you know, or speaking to people and you know what questions they typically ask and also what has won deals for you, 
I would say those are the best opportunities to, to put as call to actions. So like if you have a specific asset that does a good job of convincing people, like I said, a case study or some, some type of testimonial that has historically um, done a good job of, of warming people up, then definitely put a button to that. Or if they say, well, you know, what does your guys' website look like? Or, well, you know, I can't figure out your website or something like that. Then you could actually have it be, you could do a screen recording of your website navigation or if there's really lots of different applications, but I would say that the learning is whatever frequently asked questions you get upon outreach, that needs to be a button. So if they're saying, well, hey, I was looking at your website, I didn't really understand what the offering was. That the button would be a screen recording answering that question. Um, of course, that, that was very hypothetical what I just described, but the idea is to, to ha kind of have an understanding of where your customer is at um, on outreach. Just because when you have so many options, people will kind of enter uh, analysis paralysis and they're like, whoa, there's just too many options. I don't know what to click. Um, so I would say don't, don't go heavy on the seat call to actions, but you know, have everything there that is appropriate. So a booking button, social proof, and then maybe a visit a website. And then that fourth one could be either the request pricing or your fact sheet or any other type of, of asset you have that third step. So we know we upload the logo, upload the profile picture. Then the third thing here is setting up your call to action. So once your calendar is done, we'll get that guy in there first. And then next thing is, uh, those other assets as well. Like I said, the social proof or the request the demo or pricing, um, so setting up the appropriate ones there. And then what I also would do is, like I said, set everything as a default. So that way, each time you create a video, it automatically attaches those same call to actions. Um, okay, so what I would say, you have a little bit of homework. Uh, let's get your logo on there, get your profile picture, uh, get Calendly approved, hopefully, and then let's schedule a follow-up here to get you ready to go. Bye-bye.